Do you really truly understand the real estate sales funnel? Well, if you don't, you're going to find out today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now, and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling, and I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. And now, your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. As always, you can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. This is episode 166. Jen O'Brien, we're talking the funnel today. Yes, the sales funnel that I'm very happy to share this amazing graphic that Matt put together. I, I w we had worked on something to demonstrate the different ways leads come in, you know, from social media mainly, or just everywhere actually, online and offline. And it was a really great graphic all by itself. And then I do need to give a little shout out. I was listening to uh, a, a, a Tom Ferry podcast. You know, I listen to Brian, I listen to Tom, I listen to a variety of other people's podcasts. And I just really loved this recent podcast where they had a guest speaker on who, who really had, knows a lot about online marketing digital digital marketing and so forth and I loved a couple of the ways they were describing the sales funnel and I was like oh, we could definitely augment what we're talking about and tie it all together and help everybody understand a simple graphic but it's really more about how you create your online presence to the, the I guess the easiest way to say this is a bit of a blueprint. Maybe that's a good way to say it. How about we help you with a blueprint that you can actually download today. And, you, and, and we're gonna talk it through and help you from whether you're advertising or you're just trying to create a presence and a following with your, your organic content. So we're really gonna walk through a, a traditional sales funnel with a twist. With a twist. Yeah, it is a, with with a, twist. a twist. With a little help from our friends over at the Tom Ferry podcast. It, it's like the sales funnel for real estate on steroids, if you want my opinion. It's, yeah, it's got it's a lot great. of information there. You know, what happened is is we're, we're really working on a lot of great training and recently, and uh, some things have started to really come together for me in understanding that everything is about getting people to know, like, and trust you, right? Even the people that know you, okay? Yeah, they may like you. Sure. They may not always work with you, right? But, but today we're really gonna speak about how do you generate leads? And then what do you have to do to get people to know, like, and trust you so you can convert a lead into a person who uh, lists or sells a property with you and then ultimately uh, stays in your database, becomes a client for life. And, and that's the goal. We're all wanting to be able to get repeat and referral business. So that's what we're going to demonstrate graphically to you today. Then let's but, jump. You know, before we talk about that, we certainly have to talk about the hockey playoffs. Oh, yeah, you're that's now cool. the and uh, it's the weirdest playoffs because they rearrange the divisions. So it's very interesting. All the, They have a northern division. And, it, and after next year, the divisions are all back to the way they were. But they did this for COVID. So they, you know, last year they were in the bubble. Hockey did a great, and basketball, remember, they did a great job where they, they this was playoff time last year. Yep. You know, uh, a couple months, this month or month prior. And and honestly, uh, those guys did a great job, but everybody had to stay in one location. So what they've done now this year is they rearranged the division so there wasn't as much travel. So the teams literally, instead of playing all the teams that they generally play, they seem just, they played just the same people in their division. Um, and so we're in a tough division, Vegas Golden Knights. Um, and the As Canadians we should be. Getting started. So all the Canadian teams all played each other. They stayed in Canada. They didn't have to travel and the U.S. teams didn't travel to Canada. I just think that's an interesting way that they, the National Hockey League adapted to COVID, right? So here we are in the playoffs and the Golden Knights um, are one and one. So that's all I have to say about that. I don't know. It's kind of. I think the whole thing is kind of cool, right? Get to play teams that you normally play all the time, either. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's really. Well, it is, but they they are they're having a tough time with the team that beat them the most. And and Golden Knights had the had the most wins of the entire NHL with 40 wins. They had a you know a shorter season. So anyway, very interesting. It is about adapting, and we certainly have adapted our business through this year and things are still changing. So I'm excited to chat about this a little bit more today. So why don't we dive in? 
You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts. Tune in and you can watch us on YouTube. And why don't you unveil the sales funnel, the Matt Emerson WBNL version of the sales funnel. So the funnel part, um, and again, I'm describing this for you listeners, but if you want to go grab this image and get a better, uh, hopefully I'll do a great job describing what we're looking at. If you're watching obviously on YouTube, you can see it, but you can also download it. Go to WBNLpodcast.com, episode 166, and we'll have this up there for you so that you can really take a look at this and and get a sense of this because there's so many things we can do with this. Uh This can help you put your marketing plan together, where you're gonna spend your advertising dollars, what your content creation schedule looks like, right? So let me describe the sales funnel from the perspective of the the top of the funnel, right? And and the way we've done this is funnel position, top, middle, bottom. Then there's phases, which is the know, like, and trust and how you're taking a consumer through these phases of getting to know who you are so that they like you and ultimately trust you so you can have them, you know, actually make a decision to work with you. Then there's content type. And I'm really going to get into a little bit about how you hit all these tiers, you know, all these little points in this, in these three tiers. And there it's why, how, and what. And that'll make sense in a moment here. And then we've even included the way the Google algorithms and the search engines and social looks at this from an advertising platform standpoint. So top, middle, and bottom becomes awareness, then consideration, and then conversion. And it's all the same things, just a bunch of different words. And then obviously we have a funnel that has these three levels. And then the ultimate, what I was calling in in a recent training I did, the gold at the end of the rainbow, you know, yeah. is the bottom, the, the true bottom of the funnel is what we're calling the follow-up funnel. And that is where your clients that send you business, this is your referral base, this is what you're doing. You're trying to get everybody to come into the top of this funnel. And I'm going to walk you through now, depending on whether you, it doesn't matter if you're advertising paid or you're doing organic leads. There's a formula to follow to keep getting these folks down the funnel to get to the place where they trust and they understand what you're all about and they actually believe you're going to help them so that they become your client. And then, of course, you're going to do everything. It's all about getting them down there so that you can continue to be cl- create clients, clients for life, really. And you do that through your client appreciation program or whatever you're doing to stay top of mind and to touch and to connect with the people that you already know. Um, so what, let's stop at, let's start at the top of the funnel and the top of the funnel for, we, we think of generally in a traditional sales funnel as the cold traffic. These are people you don't know, and it could be things into me, what we put in the top of our funnel when it comes to overall online advertising, it's the, it's the social media, it's Facebook, it's running ads on LinkedIn, uh, you know, even Instagram, YouTube, actually YouTube, we, I feel like if you do YouTube the right way, it's more in the middle, but here's why people don't go to Facebook and say, Hey, I think I'll go look for a house, right? They go, they're on Facebook or they're on LinkedIn or they're on Instagram and they come across your ad. That's what happens. If you understand how to do that properly and you know how to target and retarget and again, stuff for a different podcast. Uh, well, we can chat about that or have Cosmo come in. And yeah, that'd be a good idea. About that. But the point is their opportunity, people are scrolling through. This is why they're not cold lead. They're cold leads. Uh, they're cold traffic because they didn't, they didn't intentionally go there. Right. So let's stop there for a second and we'll talk a little bit about, about this other area here. So if the top of the funnel is also known as the no, and then the why for content type, and it's all about awareness, then the kind of content that you want to do in the initially here, and then ha- continue to get people to see your content is it's about your value proposition. Uh-huh. So this is things like one minute videos that unlock who you are as a person. So this strategy I'm going to talk about as I go through down the funnel is you've chose Instagram to be your social media platform, for example. And so you're going to have to consistently post every day, right, Matt? Pretty much. You can't just go do Instagram and then like once a month put something on Instagram. You cannot. 
All right. So what we're talking about here, you're on Instagram, insert whatever your social media platform of choice is, but you have to continue to initially here as you're developing um, this whole flow is have posts that help people see who you are. And it's not always about real estate. It's not, you know, I believe in the 80, 20 rule. So you could be doing videos and stories and reels in Instagram. I'll stay with this as the example that are showing, uh, who you are. Like for me, I might go, go do something and say, Oh, all right. The golden Knights won last night. What a game, you know, because it's me, I'm being authentic and transparent and I'm okay. And maybe I'm going to attract other people who are avid hockey fans like I am right. Sure. now. Uh, and that's the point I'm making. You're not trying to be somebody you're not, you're sharing what your values are. Uh, you're, you're being careful, right? So you don't want to do things that are going to alienate people. So as always, we recommend highly that you don't talk about politics or religion or any of those things that are going to divide people. But is it okay for me if I am? And Matt knows this, he doesn't want to talk to me about hockey. <laughs> I like to listen to you about hockey. I like your passion. I like people that are passionate about anything. All right. So even if, see, that's great. Uh, thank you for saying that because even if he's not a hockey fan, but he likes the idea that, yep. man, this, this real estate agent is passionate about her sports, you that's know, and true. I, if she's that, then maybe she's passionate about it, you know, working real estate. Well, then I can work that in as well. So these are just little one minute stories that unlock who you are as a person, as a professional. And the bottom line here is just be who you are. Be transparent. Don't try to be something that you're not. All right. And that's the top of the funnel, right? Um, the next is the middle of the funnel. And let's talk about the sources of those leads. So this is going to be things like Google ads. So Google ads are going to are different than social media because somebody actually went to Google and said, real estate agents in Wesley Chapel, Florida, and maybe they come across my ad. Okay, or they're looking for homes in a certain area. And so they're intentionally looking. And so I put Google in the middle, as well as Zillow and Realtor.com leads. So those are people who are on those sites looking for houses. Now, is every single person a lead who answers an ad? No. However, they're definitely warmer than the social media people who just happen to be scrolling through. Back on that just for a second. The opportunity is you run a great ad or you're posting these videos for awareness and uh, for example, or reels or stories and people see you, but they're, they're not, they're not on Facebook to look for, but they maybe they're happening to be thinking about selling their home or they're thinking about buying and they keep seeing your content. That's the point I was trying to get across. And I think I missed yeah. that. I think it's implied, but I'm going to say it again. So now we're in the middle of the funnel and the middle of the funnel takes people from knowing through what we just talked about with who are you to liking you beginning to like you and then the how you make that happen is sharing your knowledge and your expertise right so now you're going to have more content in here that's really going to be about uh here's what's going on in the market and here's a new new home track that just opened up and it can be about real estate but it can also be about uh be, what you know about the local community and i i really do believe it's about being that local market expert that community influencer so you're talking about real estate clearly all things real estate but you're also talking about what it's like to live in the wesley chapel area of florida mm -hmm. and what are the cool communities and what's a new feature that's happened or here's a new a restaurant that opened up, right? That's the whole thing because it's about, I'm telling you people, I was talking to some folks. I was even talking to my sister recently here in Florida and I, I was getting some insights into how she looked when she was deciding to move to Florida. What did she put into Google? And it was like specifically the words like living and working in Tampa, Florida, right? And that's what people are looking for. They want to get a sense of what is it going to be like Right. If I'm moving from A to Z, what? let me learn about it. Like what areas of this North Tampa area, as an example, do people want to live? Well, that's what they put into Google. So those are the clues, by the way, of the kind of content that you need to create. All you need to do is just to go type into Google, um, you know, uh, places to live in uh, suburbs or neighborhoods to live in North Tampa. And you'll then see, have you noticed this, Matt? You know that it always says people all also ask for. Sure. That's Google telling you this is what people put into the search engine. So this is before even getting all technical and, and, and setting up a Google ads account where you'll go in and get a keyword tool that you can go do the statistics on. So if you're very analytical, you could dive very deep into 
what kind of content you need to create based on what people are searching for. But that's the point. You want to create content based on what people are searching for, and then they may find you. Okay, so what else is there? Realtor.com, Zillow, Google, and then this is where we're putting YouTube because we feel that we're really working on this, right, Matt? We're working on, uh, but boy, it's a lot of work. <laughs> work is it's a lot of work. <laughs> work is the key thing here. Uh, Cosmos really got us understanding that um, I've been feeling like this for a long time, but with his input, I think YouTube is the way to go. Um, and that's the, the, the choice I want to do here is I'm, so, I'm so starting to get real estate going here in Florida. However, it takes a commitment to get out and get the videos done. And then honestly, you need to hire somebody to do the editing. And that's what we've realized. It's not the best use of your time if you're going to get into video to go and have uh, spend the whole day, which you can do, ask Matt Emerson, uh, editing a video and uploading it to YouTube. So you go out and be the star. You get the, you get the content done, and then you hand it over to a VA or someone who can help you. Right, Matt? That's right. I mean, seriously. Yeah. And depending on what your internet connection is like, you could spend all day. Totally. Hey, yeah, and if you want to get something posted every day, you're in a world of hurt. Okay. So again, uh, that con that middle content, that's where those leads are coming from. And the kind of content that you want to put out to move people down the funnel from the no and the like is the how content. And it's behind the scenes. It's the trends. It's at an inspection. And it's also that community stuff. All right. And that brings us to the bottom of the funnel, which is also known as trust right? The no like and the, now the trust. And then you went from why me to how I do business and let me show you my expertise to the what of converting people, meaning the uh, calls to action. So now that you have shown who you are, you're building that, uh, people are starting to like what you're providing, you have the opportunity now to close and to tell people to go do X, Y, or Z, right? right? So in, the, in this area, this is these leads, the hot leads. So I know I'm kind of combining straight up simple way to look at the way you do leads as cold, warm, and hot. So let me stay with that for a second. So the cold was more social. The warm was people are actually going to Zillow or Google, or maybe to your, you, they found your YouTube channel because you're very consistent with it. Now, these are more like somebody called you off your sign. Okay. Or they came to your open house. They, they, those two would fall between warm and hot because they're really out looking and they want some information. That is a better lead in my book, as well as someone who maybe you got as a relocation lead or you got a referral. So let's say an agent in another state called up and said, hey, I have some people to refer to you. That's a hot lead. OK, those, those are people who are ready to go now. You know, you don't you're not going to have to nest. Now, that being said, just because you got that, you still have to walk people down the no like trust factor. That's right. You're going to have to do what you have to do. They're not all just going to go, oh, yeah, okay, so-and-so referred you. I'm totally working with you. Yeah, I mean, you, have to, you have to provide that in the way you're communicating with people. The content you provide them in your follow-up has to follow this funnel, in my opinion. All right, so those that's where we're all getting uh, where we want to ultimately get to is we take people down the funnel or they come in the funnel wherever, wherever they come in. And then you're still having to build that uh, that no like trust is the keywords for me because people aren't going to work with you until they really actually trust you and they're not going to trust you right away until they build you build rapport with them. The way you can do all that online anyway is through the content that you create. It's it needs to show up in everything that you do and in the in the bottom here and those calls to action basically all ads and things that you run need to have a call to action. But if you're going to keep following up and building that in your email and your lead follow up, it has to follow this this formula, in my opinion. So you can get to the the ultimate goal, which is to have people work with you and then give you referrals, which is what everyone is striving for. Anybody I've ever talked to in all these years, Matt, when I do a class and I say, OK, where does everybody get their business from? Eighty percent of them are going to tell me it's their people they know, repeat clients. Uh, folks that are in their database, whatever you want to call it, SOI, COI, whatever the word is. Um, okay, so that is just a little overview talk on the sales funnel. Uh, there's so many places that we can go with this, um, but I, I, what I love about sometimes taking thoughts and putting them into a formula or a graphic, it's visual, and it can help you really start designing many things. So let's just talk for a moment about 
reiterate what that is. So first of all, your ad campaigns. That's the first thing that you're going to be able to do. What what kind of content? How are you driving people down this traffic, uh, that funnel to go from, you know, who are you to showing showcasing your expertise to earning the right to convert them and ask them to do something like fill out a form to, uh, you know, get a report to choose you to work with, right? So it's going to be in your ad structure. It's going to be in your follow-up campaigns, right? So right. once you get a lead, you must you must ultimately continue to do things to show your value, provide content, educate, inform people. So they're like, wow, I have to work with this person. I'm not ready now, but that newsletter she's sending out every month, I'm, that's, that's useful. I haven't seen anybody do that, right? Or do it that way that she does it as an example. Use your damn CRM. Now, Matt is always going to find a way to pop that in. And that's exactly uh, where it is right now. Your, your damn CRM is going to do that for you. Now, your damn CRM is not going to automatically make that happen for you. Most CRMs come with a great, uh, most real estate CRMs come with some decent follow-up campaigns for buyers and sellers. But what you need to do, in my opinion, is put your spin on it. T take these, take these, um, you know, t templated uh, texts and emails and personalize them. Maybe shorten them up, actually. Yeah. You know, make it sound like you. Now, that's going to take work. But guess what? Once you do it one time, you have your buyer lead campaign, your seller lead campaign, people that you meet at an open house. There's just a couple things that you change in the beginning, but it's basically the rest of the follow up. But if you take the time to customize those, maybe add some videos, it's over here working for you in your CRM is doing that work for you to build people down the funnel here to push them down the funnel from that no like and trust. Yeah, exactly. There's more consideration the more they see you, right? Right. And then the, and then so so we have leads, we have the follow up that is in your damn CRM. And then overall it's your content strategy, right? It's your it's everything that you're deciding to do whether you decide to do paid advertising or not. If you're going to go all organic and leverage a social media channel as an example, so we'll use YouTube, for example. So in we're working on YouTube. We have people on our team in Vegas. Cosmos working with John and Katie, who are really doing a great job starting to, to put more videos out, and they're getting some feedback. And, and I asked John the other day, you know, how, how are you feeling about this? Because if it's a lot of work and he goes, you know, it was really hard in the beginning. And I, and, and I can see his progression of because we're hard on ourselves is what I'm trying to say. It's like sure. it's not good enough and you're wasting a lot of time and you think. But that's the bottom line. If you're going to do video, your first 10 uh, to 20 videos, they just may actually suck. OK. <laughs> and if you were to go back and look at some of my original videos, I, I have recently. And I'm like, holy crap, I've come a long way and ability to communicate. So just deal with it. We all have to start somewhere. You take baby steps and then you get better at it. But if you stay consistent and persistent, you can follow the sales funnel idea to uh, help guide you to the type of content that you need to be putting out there. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't mean that in every video you don't have a call to action, um, but you have to, I believe, follow a formula like this to, to get people to see who you are, see if they can connect with you in some way, you have to showcase that you do know what the heck you're talking about. And again, the only way to do this, it amazes me, Matt. I can't tell you how, you know how passionate I am about, you have to understand the numbers. You have to know what's happening in the housing market. You have to get uh, that information coming to you. And I'll talk to people and they're like, just cursory knowing about what's happening and things that are impacting our industry. And I'm like, come on now, if you really, and so this is what I want you to hear me say. Don't be like the rest of the pack. Do the opposite of what everyone else is doing. And it's not difficult to stand out with great customer service. It's not difficult to stand out as the expert by simply becoming a student of our industry and feeling comfortable talking about it. I mean, that's it. That's how you can do it. And that was what can start happening in your lives, in your posts, in your stories, in your videos that you may be doing. And it's going to take time. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take you three to six months of consistently doing that. But if you choose your channel for the right reasons and you do this, it's going to start working for you. We're already starting to see that with our team. So uh, that's all I wanted to share today, Mr. Emerson. Well, that's good stuff, Jen O'Brien. I love the new modified enhanced turbo uh, sales the funnel. Turbo sales funnel. I it, like it. it. It's good stuff. 
All right. Well, as always, everyone, you can find our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. This was episode 166. Uh, and there will be this down the download of the sales funnel right inside our show notes. So make sure you check that out. Any final thoughts, Jen O'Brien? Uh, no, the only thing I have to say is go Knights go. There you go. All right, everyone. Be safe out there. Be forever wandering, but not lost. <laughs>